Good afternoon, good evening, good night, good morning, depending where the listeners around the world are. Today I will delve into a few aspects of color filter mosaic and the so-called raw data, which in my personal opinion uh, should be considered not only uh, uh, in production, but also in the archival context. Firstly, I would stress out that there is no such a thing as raw data. Data are always cooked in a way or in another. Fine. Um, <clears throat> This is my today's summary. I will speak about buyer type sensors, what we can do with the so-called raw data, and how all this uh, could be implemented, used, and standardized uh, mainly in this order. Let's start with the past, with the sensor and the buyer filter pattern. Since eight years, I have been publicly presenting several times on this topic, not because I am obsessed, but because I think it's an important topic to discuss. A digital image is usually represented as a rectangular matrix of values, a raster image, image and a single element in this raster is a picture element, or short, a pixel. It is important to stress out that in a color system, a pixel includes the information for all color channels, all color components. The first <clears throat> point in my list is about the quantity of pixels, and all the other points are about the quality of pixels. And the chroma uh, subsampling in analog television and video is actually an analog lossy compression and strangely enough this same mechanism has also been used in digital video and television and buyer can be seen as a evolution of it. I remember that this is the dilemma that we are facing constantly. We wish the best image quality in the smallest file size at the shortest encoding time. In the real world, this is not possible, and we have to compromise at least on one of the parameters. And there are even more bad news. The vast majority of today's sensors measure only the variation in light intensity and not the hue, but we are working mainly with color images and the vast majority of the scanners that uh, people can afford worldwide use these buyer filter sensors. What is a buyer filter sensor? The 13th of November of this year will be the 10th anniversary of this gentleman's passing. He was a scientist working at Kodak who invented this file uh, filter pattern, which later were named after him. And this is the patent, his most fa famous patent. In, it has to be delivered in 1976. That's not the day before yesterday. That's 46 years ago. And uh, here he uses his own terminology, but I don't go into that. I uh, stress out only that, that the luminance elements Y in the schematic became the green elements and the two chrominance components C1 and C2 in the schematic became the red and blue filters. So you have the sensor and on the top of each cell you have a small filter, a very tiny filter who let uh, go through only a color around the wished color. This gives not the full information, but half of the green, a quarter of red, and a quarter of blue. And this is obviously a loss of information. And the loss of information can be illustrated here. <coughs> Sorry. In one, we have the real image to digitize. In two, we have the vision 
of the sensor, what the sensor actually measures. And on the red tulip, you see that the red pixels or the red points are switched on very brightly, and the green and blue are more or less switched off. The three is the interpretation of what that is, and the four is then the so-called demosaicing or the debiring. And you see, especially in the foreground, a huge, a bigger pixelization. Now let's move into the present. What we can do with this information to have the full image. This could be the the information of one bit. Uh, uh, of one uh, cell with a blue filter, two cells with a green filter, and one cell with a red filter on its top, with a 12-bit uh, format, which, which is uh, usual today in the scanners. Oh, sorry, this one. And uh, the question is how to turn, turn these values in information for all the cells. This is what is measured, and I fill up the vectors with zeros, so we have one third of the needed information, and this is the information that gives uh, us the full RGB. All what is in black in this image has been calculated with the values that have been measured that are the colored ones, or more schematically, you can represent it uh, with letters. We experimented a lot with another way to use this data by uh, taking four sensor measured values and uh, putting them in just one pixel. In this case, we have the values that are measured and the values that uh, are used. <coughs> you see we don't have black information, all comes from the sensor and the two greens can be combined, for instance, calculating the mean of the two values. Or more schematically, we can say something like that. So we have now two ways to use buyer type data. The classic approach, which is a digital blow-up, or uh, baroque approach, which is a digital reduction. We have the choice between a bigger quantity of pixels or a higher quality of pixels. The many things I experimented in this file includes a codec that I programmed in order to experiment with different debiring or demosaicing algorithm and to choose always the one that gives the best result for a specific type of image. And one you have the, once you have the impression you have uh, resolved all the problems, you discover that there are many different types of patterns and actually we are uh, testing in production, we are using in production Bayer, the CYGM, and the Sony RGB. All three are in production in our company. The ones with uh, unfiltered cells are not good for film digitization because it increases a lot the noise. It's good for other purposes, but not for film digitization. Now let's take a look at the end to the future. In my opinion, it's uh, important to try to ask two questions and to answer two questions. The first one is what exactly does the sensor and how exactly are the so-called raw data processed. And the proposed terminology to do that is a pixel for picture element that we know, but to use the word sensor for sensor element and this has been proposed by um, um, uh, Charles Poynton uh, a month ago at the conference Color in Film in Bern in Switzerland, and I presented it at the YASA conference in Mexico and to my students in Donostia. This is an unpublished work for the moment by the IMAGO Technical Committee. Uh, I will show you the photon pass 
diagram. It has been drawn by Daniele, uh, Daniel Siracusano, and it will be released as open source in the next weeks or months, but not years. So this is the schema, the full schema, step by step, the photon passed from the viewer to, from the scene to the viewer, from the left uh, camera, then post-production and presentation. The camera is an element that we have also in film scanners. We need a camera and the two parts that are interesting for what I am saying are here, what happened in the sensor and what happened in the raw processing. That's exactly what we are doing at my company since we started building our own scanners back in uh, 2014. So we try to focus to these two steps and we can today have control of the uh, digital processing, the white balance, the demosaicing, but we have not control on the sensor that we cannot change. The raw processing can be done in the camera or at the beginning of the post-production, and we do that uh, both depending on what we are doing. So we have the we have seen the demosaicing where the sensor values are transformed into pixel values. And we have seen as well that we actually can do that with or without the mosaicing. Um, in order to have the full uh, color information that is needed to screen an image or to see an image. And all this has a lot to do, in my opinion, with transparency, teaching and trust. What does this mean for us? What does this mean for us? As you know, uh, uh, FFV1 version 0, 1 and 3 have been standardized last year. Thank you, Michael Niedermeyer, Dave Reis, Jerome Martinez and many others. And there is also a draft document of version 4. The possible improvements to FFV1 are under discussion in the seller GitHub presence or in the mailing list, the seller mailing list, or here at the no, no Time to Wait conferences. I suggested a number of improvements in various presentations over the last five years, and I personally consider that the support of any type of channels would be the most important one, which includes the support for Y prime COCG and multispectral scanning data. FFV1 could actually become the first open source widely spread codec video to support not only many type of pixel values, but also the sensor values, the real raw data which the sensor generates. This step could be really a game changer. I also suggest other highly technical improvements which I skip for the sake um, sake of time and uh, I sum up with uh, different ways to store buyer type data. The first one is the classic one, it blows up the data by 300%. That's an incredible waste of storage. In addition, often, often we use algorithms that are unknown. We don't know exactly what is going on in this black box. The second one is the Baroque solution. It reduces the data that are generated by uh, one fourth. And the last one could be a more modern way to store just the data that comes out from the sensor and have the possibility after to process them in different ways depending on what we wish to do with this data. And I started with a slogan, raw data are cooked. And I have here a more precise slogan uh, that resumes, I think, better the idea. And this concludes my presentation. I, this address of our company is valid only until end of uh, January. In February, we move.
our equipment and we set up a new uh, possibility to work at the Lichtspiel in Bern. So that was uh, my presentation. The slides are, as usual, available on our website, and I think one or two minutes are left for Q&A. Thank you. Thank you, Reto. I always, I always feel like my mind has been expanded after I hear a Reto presentation. We have time for just one question. If anyone has a pressing question they'd like to ask, Reto. Uh, Kieran O'Leary, um, when you were doing the work with the, I think was it the, the mosaic tool and you could choose all the different debiring algorithms, um, was there one that stood out as being the one that gave the best RGB values in the end? Uh, you have to check at the image. If you have an image that has a lot of details, is different than another one. If you have an image that moves a lot, then some algorithm give a better result than other. In general, if you have ca uh, cameras or scanners that re uh, work real time, they have a bad algorithm. And if, if they don't uh, work real time, they can implement a better one that needs more time. You have a factor of more than one to hundred between this algorithm in the time uh, consuming. And there are some algorithms like uh, Langsos that is very bad for uh, debiring. It's very good for uh, scaling, but not for debiring. Thank you very much, Reto. One more round of applause.